With a single suicide note, 150 years of combined prison sentences, and a staggering $65 billion vanished, the life of Bernie Madoff transformed from revered financial titan to history's most notorious fraudster. For over two decades, he operated a Ponzi scheme of unparalleled scale, weaving a web of deceit so intricate that it fooled not just investors, but industry giants and regulators alike. Who was the man behind the mask? And how did his seemingly unbreakable empire crumble into dust in a matter of days? Ambition, betrayal, a system blinded by greed, and trust was shattered in an instant. Born to Ralph and Sylvia Madoff on April 29th, 1938, Bernie was anything but outstanding. He was average, an average student at an average school with below average finances. Yet an undeniable ambition flickered within him. He was a hustler, washing cars, mowing lawns, anything to earn extra cash, foreshadowing the relentless drive that would propel him and ultimately consume him. Bernie watched his parents, Ralph and Sylvia, in two contrasting worlds. By day, Ralph's tool of choice was a wrench, but by night, spreadsheets replaced screwdrivers and he bathed in the soft glow of his desk lamp, meticulously analysing bank statements and following stock charts. It was within this nocturnal transformation that Bernie sensed a hidden allure, a whisper of power held within the realm of finance. Sylvia, artistic at heart, worked with Ralph and shared Bernie's quiet ambition. They built their own firm, Gibraltar Securities. Some sources mentioned it as a stock brokerage firm, while others simply specified it as an investment company. Bernie couldn't help but be drawn to the hushed conversations and the late night phone calls. The whispers of his parents' financial world had morphed into an undeniable hum, drawing him further towards the abstract dance of numbers and deals. Yet, Bernie's path wouldn't be linear. He enrolled in law school, perhaps influenced by his mother's artistic spirit seeking order. Or maybe it was a subconscious rebellion against the rigidity of his father's financial realm. Whatever the reason, law school felt more like a detour than a destination. It was within these halls that fate intervened, however. Bernie met Ruth, his high school sweetheart, and a spark ignited that transcended textbooks. In her, he saw an anchor to his ever-evolving ambitions. Ruth also possessed a shrewdness that mirrored his own. Together, the courtroom was replaced by visions of their own financial empire built together, brick by brick. However, the whispers that surrounded his father's business dealings grew ever more present. Whispers turned to warnings, warnings to accusations, and finally, in the grip of January 1964, the SEC forced Gibraltar's doors shut after cutting a deal that there would be no punishment if the firm stayed out of business. Was it a glimpse into the future? A foreshadowing of Bernie's own controversial path? Or just his father's mere stumble? Bernie absorbed these experiences, filing them away in the archive of his mind. With his own ambitions burning, Bernie, with the help of Ruth, started his own company, Bernard Investment Securities. With $5,000 saved and a further $50,000 borrowed from in-laws, they started as a penny stock brokerage. It wasn't Wall Street's grand entrance, but for Bernie, it was a universe waiting to be explored. But Wall Street didn't make it easy. Constant reminders of being an outsider, Bernie knew he was excluded from the crowd. We were small, not part of New York Stock Exchange, he once muttered in an interview. But Bernie wasn't one to sulk. He carved his own path as a hustler, happily trading in the leftovers of bigger players. While established firms might have turned their nose up and dismissed smaller transactions, Madoff saw potential. He'd secure any deal he could get his hands on. His reputation built, bit by bit. Ever the experimenter, Bernie stumbled onto his big break. Bernie and his brother Peter ventured into the uncharted territory of electronic trading. They called it artificial intelligence, a field ripe with potential. Their innovative system attracted massive order flow, giving them a bird's eye view of the market like never before. Suddenly, the tables had turned. Bernie found himself at the epicenter of a technological shift. It wasn't just about conquering the system anymore. It was about rewriting the rules on his own terms. This excluded upstart had cracked Wall Street wielding immense power that could prove both potent and perilous. By the late 1980s, his wealth rivaled industry titans, reaching a staggering $100 million annually. 
or 260 million in 2024. Madoff also served on the NASDAQ Board of Directors from 71 to 93, and was responsible for overseeing select operations and developing new market policies. Little did the board know, however, that they were unknowingly nurturing a predator within their ranks. Intrigued by Bernie's inconsistencies, Harry Markopoulos, a young analyst with a nose for financial oddities, found himself drawn to the enigma of Bernie Madoff's seemingly impossible returns. Each consistent, sky-high gain defined typical market knowledge. He dove deeper, pouring in over the data and reports, every piece analysed, and it formed a chilling picture. Not an oasis of financial brilliance, but a mirage. A house of cards bent on a foundation of lies, waiting for the inevitable collapse. His findings were chilling. He presented his suspicions to the SEC, but Madoff, a master manipulator, had cultivated an especially powerful image. His reputation was a shield, deflecting his accusations with ease. The authorities, blinded by Madoff's status and the sheer audacity of the scheme, dismissed Markopoulos. Undeterred, however, Markopoulos refused to back down. He became obsessed, driven by a conviction that refused to be silenced. He spent years meticulously documenting his findings, refining his arguments and gathering evidence. He wrote reports, met with anyone that would listen, even self-published a book. Years passed, filled with frustration and near defeat. He kept knocking on doors, his voice growing louder, his evidence more substantial. As the tremors of the 2008 financial crisis rippled through the markets, fear turned every instrument into a question mark. Investors desperate for stability clawed their money back from everywhere, including what seemed like the unshakable haven of Bernie's fund. But this panicked exodus exposed the scheme's Achilles heel, its dependence on a constant flow of new money to satisfy its already existing investors. By December, the firm was facing imminent collapse. Knowing he couldn't keep up the withdrawals without new money coming in, Bernie turned to his sons, Andrew and Mark, with desperation etched on his face. On December 11th, 2008, he confessed, it's all just one big lie. The sons, who worked as executives at Bernie's firm, had always harboured doubts, but now their father's confession had confirmed the worst. They knew they had to act, but a web of complicated emotions tied their hands. Would they expose their father, or risk becoming complicit in a massive fraud? To Mark and Andrew's lawyers, however, the choice was clear. The next day, they turned their father over, shattering the illusion into fragments. The world watched in stunned silence as the truth unraveled. The man who once stood as a titan of finance, his name synonymous with success, was now exposed as a fraud of epic proportions. $64.8 billion, dreams and lives lay in ruins victims of a carefully constructed deception. As Bernie, adamant about his son's influence in his fraud, awaited his fate. The sentence was as merciless as his deception. 150 years, the maximum possible, leaving no room for escape. Andrew, unable to escape the public scrutiny and inner turmoil, tragically took his own life in 2014. His wife, Ruth, stripped of her lavish lifestyle, clung to what remained of her dignity, whilst facing constant public judgement. His other son Mark, unfortunately, he died from cancer. To his last breath, Madoff exclaimed his innocence, refusing to express remorse for the wreckage he left behind. Even in death, his impact still continues to resonate. Victims tirelessly fight for compensation, with billions still unrecovered. His legacy serves as a chilling reminder of the importance of ethics, transparency, and vigilance in the financial markets. The Madoff scandal may be a closed chapter, but its lessons echo and remain a cautionary tale for generations to come. If you enjoyed this video, give this other one a watch. It's a pretty intriguing one on the story of Enron, a company which deceived people for years and somehow got away with one of the biggest frauds in potentially US history. Click subscribe and see you next time.